Hey everybody, Mickey here. Uh, good morning. It's morning time here in San Francisco. Um, so I'm on my way to meet up with a gentleman called Glenn Harris. So who is Glenn Harris? So Glenn Harris is the worldwide vice president of uh, technical sales consulting and also professional services at Oracle. Uh, I work with Glenn and he's been with uh, Oracle for a long, long time. So I'm going to be going in and uh, picking up Glenn. Uh, what Glenn doesn't know is I'm going to be doing um, a questionnaire with him. So I'm going to be asking Glenn some questions, which um, I'm guessing are interview type questions. Um, so I'm going to interview Glenn. And the questions I'm going to ask him, uh, he's going to sing, think they're really peculiar questions. But the interesting thing is, these questions are very strategic questions asked by organizations like Forbes and Harvard Business School and Google and some of the big top blue chip companies. And the questions are actually designed to measure someone's skills and abilities in, in different ways outside of um, outside of actually um, the technical thing they're interviewing. So it gives people an insight as to who they are. So I've got a whole bunch of questions, probably about 15 questions, 16 questions, and I'm gonna um, run, get, run Glenn through those questions and see you know, how he answers them. Competition's out. Okay. You know, that's a dead system. Now there's new competition. Okay. Anyway, but no, you're right. I was thinking about VBox. Okay, you know? so we're going to do something fun, yeah, okay? Right. And you're going to focus, okay? Oh, All right. Dear God. Okay. It's like my shirt going to open, like my boobs going to come out, you yeah. know, like the hot girls in the uh, okay in the Ferraris. There okay. Go. So don't answer your phone. Okay. <laughs> so this is Mickey, and yeah. this is an interview in a Ferrari oh, with man. with Glenn Harris, <laughs> the vice president of uh, technical sales consulting and professional services at Oracle Open Source Linux Software. Is this techies in cars getting tea? Yeah, so, All right. well, you know, so <laughs> Glenn doesn't know, you know, I'm going to interview him today, and I just thought, I'm going to interview him and see how he does. I've got about 15 questions that I want to ask him, and then um, I'm going to get your guys' opinion on his answers. All okay? Right. So, Glenn, are you ready for this? Uh, no, not at all. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, like I said, this is interviewing a Ferrari, Glenn Harris, VP of Technical Sales Consulting and Professional Services at Oracle for Oracle Linux. So, Glenn, question number one. Are you ready for this? Right. Okay. How would you solve problems if you were from Mars? How would I solve problems if I was from Mars? You can't take too long, Glenn. We've got 15 questions. Oh, 15. Okay. So, well, so. Uh, I think I would do them the same way. Which is? Know, which is ask a lot of questions about that question, go away and formulate a solution that uh, solves the problem. Uh, you know, and present it in a clear and cohesive way to my uh, my person who's in need of help. Is that your answer? Yeah, that's my final answer. Okay, guys, comments below. What do you think to question number one? Question number two, Glenn. Um, what do you think of garden gnomes? Garden gnomes. I think that they're a little scary, <laughs> especially when they grow up to be giant gnomes. When they're small, they're kind of cute. Uh, I've tripped on some in uh, when I've come home at night after uh, too much wine. So they can be dangerous, even though they don't mean to be. Is that your answer? That's final answer. Comments, everybody, to uh, question number two. Question number three. Why are manholes round? So they don't fall down the hole and kill the guy below. Why wouldn't a square manhole do this? not do the same? Oh, you can just turn it on an angle and slide it down the hole. Is that your answer? Final answer. Comments again. Okay, question number four, Glenn. You've been given an elephant. You can't give it away or sell it. What would you do with the elephant? I'd put him to work. I'd get a plow on the back. I could have a guard elephant, maybe like a little machine gun on top, keep those kids off my front lawn. I'd make them a guard elephant. I'd give them a job. Give them purpose. They're intelligent animals. Yeah. So you find a lancer? You'd love it. Absolutely. Final answer? Final answer. Okay. Comments on what about the elephant? 
Okay, question number five, Glenn. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? I think I'd be a willow tree. Okay. Because they like to drink water. Uh, they give a lot of shade. They're very bendy and useful. And they, uh, they provide aspirin so I could give pain relief to the world. Final answer? Final answer. Comments, everybody? Okay, question number six. We finish the interview and you step outside of this car and you find a lottery ticket and it ends up winning $10 million. What would you do? Out of this car? Yeah. I'd have to split it with you, Matt. Well, first I'd look at the back and see if it's signed because if somebody lost it, you gotta be honest, right? Uh, but if it wasn't signed, hey, I think all bets are off you and I in Tahiti. You know, we'll bring some, uh, we'll bring the wives, never come back. Final answer. Final answer. I steal $10 million. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the color of money? Well, American money is sort of greenish. Euro money is multicolor. Uh, so that's like, I guess, my literal translation. I don't think I have anything philosophical, you know, but uh, the color of money could be, uh, could be happy life, happy wife. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say the color of money is, is happy wife, happy life. I buy my wife lots of things. Final answer? Final answer. Comments, everybody? Okay, question number eight. If you had to be shipwrecked on a deserted island, but all your human needs, such as food and water, were taken care of, what two items would you want to have with you? I think I'd need my music. So I'd, I'd probably need my iPod or, you know, what happened. So I'd have to do like a desert island disc type of thing, bring my top discs with me. And uh, all my human needs are taken care of, huh? Two items. And uh, yeah, you know what? I think I'd bring Mrs. Harris with me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I said your human needs were taken uh, care of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. Then, uh, well, you know what? Then I'd bring our little boy Laszlo too. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Fine, yeah, Laszlo. Laszlo the dog. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could have our little family together in uh, in the desert island. Awesome. Fine, Laszlo. Comments, everybody. Okay. Question number nine. Are you a hunter or a gatherer? Oh, uh, you know, I've been a hunter my whole life. I, I learned how to hunt as a child. Got my first rifle when I was 22. Uh, so I like to go out and, yeah, I like to go out and hunt, be it, uh, be it for uh, critters or for, uh, well, in the old days, women. Uh, but in the, in, in the new days, deals. So I'll let somebody else gather. Awesome. So final answer. Final. Comments below. Okay. Question number 10. How much would you charge to wash every window in New York? New York. New York, my God. Well, I don't think it could physically be done in a year. Uh, well, in a lifetime, I should say. So I would need a team. I'm going in for, this is a $10 billion job. $10 billion job to clean every single window. Final answer, yeah, $10 billion. Yeah, $10 billion. Share it with my friends. Okay. Give everybody great window cleaning jobs. Okay. All right. Number 11 is a bit of a task. Uh -oh. Design a spice rack for the blind. Uh, well, I would put you know, my spice rack in alphabetical order for the non-blind, but I think I would put it in scent order for the blind. So, yeah, I would definitely have like different shape containers for like leafy spices like oregano they might be oval i would have uh sort of squarish ones for like you know ground seeds like coriander and things like that and uh you know and then i would sort of have them in scent so they could have a they know it's round they could smell if it's oregano or or, or rosemary and be really easy to you know manage your spices that way final answer final answer. comments everybody Okay, we're getting there. We're on question number 12 now. How many pennies would you fit into this car? Pennies, wow. Well, right up to the top, I think there'd be 50,000 pennies. 50,000 pennies would weigh it down. Might hurt performance a little bit, but I don't think much with this one. 
Final answer? Pennies. Final answer? Yeah. 50,000 pennies. Comments, everybody. Okay. So, question number 13. If you had a chance between, if you had a choice between two superpowers, being invisible or flying, which one would you choose? Oh, so oh, my personal superpower. No, no. Yeah, so you've got a choice between either being invisible or you can fly. Which one would you choose and why? Well, flying uh, commercial is pretty miserable. Um, so, and the amount of flying I do, I, I would definitely take flying. Absolutely. I could get here, there, and everywhere. Wouldn't have to put my tray table up. I'm going with flying. Absolutely. Final answer? Absolutely. Okay, final flying. answer. Okay. Uh, question number 14. We're almost at the end. What was the last gift you gave to someone? I, my, to anyone. Anyone. Let's see. What was my no, last No, the last gift, gift you gave to someone. Ah, okay. I gave, um... Oh, I, I think I gave some tea to Chai Zin. We, we, we're tea traders, so I think my last gift was uh, was uh, uh, he gave me some tea. I gave him some tea, so I'm going to count that as not a swap, but a gift. And I do actually have a big bag of tea to bring to him next week when I go to India. Okay, who's Chai Zin? Chai Zin is my uh, director of sales consulting all through JPAC. I just thought it was like named after the tea, Chai <laughs> Zin. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you gave now him tea. Now why he likes <laughs> tea. He's chai. Zin. Oh, there you go. Awesome. All right. So next question. Penultimate question. Um, how many square feet of pizza are eaten in the USA each year? Oh, my goodness. It's got to be up there with like McDonald's. No, square feet. Yeah. I think they sell a billion burgers a year or something like that. So I'm going to say like 100 million square feet of pizza annually. A hundred million square feet. Yeah, we're pigs. <laughs> Americans eat a billion hamburgers a year. <laughs> How can hundred million square feet enough to enough to cover Rhode Island? <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Final answer. Final. Okay. Right. Comments, please. And the final question: If you could compare yourself with any animal, which would it be, and why? An animal. Uh, I think I'm probably closest to dogs. Grew up with dogs, always had a dog. I think dogs are compassionate even when people aren't compassionate to them and, uh, and loving even when they're mistreated. So I think I sort of have that, uh, that sort of Gandhi belief of uh, you know showing love even when you're being mistreated. I think it's the best path. So I'll say uh, I'll, I'll be a good old faithful Labrador. Final answer? Final answer. So Final answer, final question. Guys, the last answer is the last question. Please give me your comments. Is he compa compassionate? Is he Gandhi-like? It was happen. just Gandhi's birthday, so happy birthday, Mr. Gandhi. There you go. Um, and you tell me, uh, this is Mickey with Glenn in interviewing the Ferrari over and out, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.